Good morning, Center Point Church. Will you stand with us? Let God arise. Let us praise his name. Hear the holy roar of God resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of this great love our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Then God arrives. Then God the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Let's sing together.
please have a seat this morning. Well, good morning. Welcome to Centerpoint Community Church. Happy Easter to you and your family. We're thrilled that you're here to join us. Thank you for coming this morning. My name's Tony. I'm the youth and outreach pastor here at Centerpoint. And there's a, a couple announcements and information I'd like to pass along to you as we continue on in our service. I hope you got one of these. This is our bulletin. I'd encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, you can also check out our webpage, centerpointarvada.org, where there's information about upcoming events. Uh, we'd love to have you involved in that and connect with us. So Feel free to take a look at that throughout the morning. We want to encourage everyone that is here to use one of these cards that you find right in the seat back, right in front of you. Uh, you can use the response card to let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know that, that you are here today and any other way that we can connect and get to develop a relationship with you. So use that card. Drop it in the offering plate as it comes by later on in our service. Uh, we'd love to have that as a record of your attendance here today. For those of you that had a lily purchased for this Sunday, how many of you saw those lilies out at the table just out in the lobby? They're beautiful. Uh, many of them are in memory of a loved one. Uh, be sure to pick those up on the way out. They wither up quickly, especially left here in that glassy uh, auditorium uh, lobby area. So pick that up. And students, we want to remind you, 7th through 12th grade students, no youth group tonight. We take a break on major holiday weekends, but I do want to invite you back next Sunday evening. We're going to be having our Nerf War, and the challenge has been issued, as we told you earlier. I'm going to try and take all of you out. I want to see how many of you can actually hit me with a Nerf gun. Those are all the information and announcements we have for today. Lots more are planned in our service. So I'd like to hand things back to our worship team for more times of music and song. Can you stand back up with us?
one of the most powerful truths of Easter, the historical documentation that Christ indeed rose from the dead, the proof, the overwhelming proof, but that his power is available to us when we follow Christ, when we believe him, when we accept and walk in obedience, that same power of the resurrection, the power of life is available to us as believers. What an amazing truth. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up.
give you thanks for the great power of the cross and of your sacrifice that lives in us, Lord. We love you. Amen. Have a seat. Well, this time it is our, our normal rhythm and routine in our worship services here at Center Point. We collect an offering. Now, if you're a guest with us here for the first time, please don't feel obligated to give. We didn't construct this just to get into your pocketbook. This is a part of our natural routine. So if you're prepared to give, uh, you can use that offering envelope or even other digital options. You'll see instructions for that in the bulletin. But we just want to be able to love God back. And we do that in many ways. And one of the ways is with our offering of finances. So gentlemen, if you could come forward, we will uh, receive our offering today. And you can also fill, put in that contact card that we talked about a couple minutes ago. Um, we're going to be having a very special a musical presentation here shortly while the offering is being collected. So you can drop that in while the music's being played and the offering uh, plate comes past your seat. Will you join me in a word of prayer, please? And we'll continue our service. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us power through your Son to see victory today, to see victory for all of eternity, and to make a profound impact in our lives and the people around us. pray that this offering will do much of the same, that you'll multiply it, you'll lift up the name of your Son, your message will be potent and powerful throughout our community and throughout the world. We ask you these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Would you stand together? We're going to do a responsive reading. It's going to be on the slides. And I'll do the first part. It's in plain text, and your part is in italics. So I'll read this, and then you, the congregation, respond with the next slide in italics. This is from Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Thank you. Please be seated.
Thank you, ladies. That was lovely. You overcame the grave, waking to a world you saved. What a great line. What a great line. Thank you. That was so beautiful. I um, wanted to alert you to a, a few things. Um, some of you know that uh, Karen Ruptak um, was taken to the hospital yesterday, um, and there was concern about her heart. Praise God. It was not her heart. It was her gallbladder. <laughs> so she had surgery this morning, and I heard the surgery went well, and uh, she's resting comfortably. So continue your prayers for her recovery. I also got word uh, today from uh, Steve and Jackie Levine, and this is, this is great. Jackie's dad got to go to heaven on Resurrection Sunday, passed away today, and so we're rejoicing that his battle is over, and the victory is won. But pray for Jackie and Steve um, as they continue to deal with, with this loss. Uh, and if you were here yesterday um, at the uh, Leslie uh, gathering, what a wonderful day it was. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, continue your prayers uh, for that family too. All right, Father God, we thank you for loving us, for caring for us, for watching over Karen. We ask that you'd continue to bring comfort in the sorrow uh, for Steve and Jackie and the, and the girls. Uh, just love on them and remind them that this is a day of resurrection and, and Dad got to go and be with Jesus, following the path that he set for him. We love you, Lord. Bless the rest of our time here this morning. We celebrate Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I've been, I've been left high and dry. A small detail. Oh, yeah, the girls come. <laughs> now I know who I can depend. Now this is a girl. All right. Where's that one that you're supposedly marrying? <laughs> well, that's right. That's right. Jamie said it's just like the women who went to the tomb. goodness there's there's a place I could go with that but I'm not gonna go there <laughs> all right what a way to start off the morning it's been a great time already this morning we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who resurrected from the grave I want to thank you for coming this morning for being here because I believe that your being here this morning is no accident. I believe God has brought us all together here for a reason. And that reason is likely unique to each one of us. With that said, it's my hope and my prayer that God will reveal to you what you came here to church for. Hopefully before you leave, if not before the day is out. As you can see, the title of my message this morning is two words, Jesus came. You know, as I studied, I, I found that that phrase is, is used over and over again dozens of times in the New Testament. In my recent study of these two words, I observed a, a number of things about Jesus' ministry and his focus that I think are so apropos for us today, for some of us to be reminded of, for some others of us to be told and taught of Jesus. Now, history confirms that Jesus was indeed a man who lived some 2,000 years ago in Roman-occupied Israel. He's credited with starting the, the religion of Christianity. But beyond the historical record, the record of his life is also recorded in the scriptures, principally the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The effect that Jesus had on this world is unmistakable. In fact, our, our gathering here today, some 2,000 years after his resurrection, speaks volumes as to his ongoing and the impact that Jesus is coming to this earth has meant. I want you to sit back, and I want you to close your Bible. There's no outline, although you can take notes along the way. You'll see some things on the screen. I want you to sit back, and I want you to hear as I, as I do my best to lay out the story of Jesus. 
and, and teach you some of the things about why Jesus came. I'm not going to make references to the scriptures, but trust me, you're going to hear scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture, but I'm going to tell it to you in my own way. I hope that's okay this morning. In my study, I was reminded, first of all, of the itinerant nature of Jesus' ministry. He traveled from village to to town and, and town to city, and he would often stop into the local synagogue and, and talk with the leaders and the people there. This formal teaching that he was doing was done right in the synagogue, and it was an immediate hit, especially with the people who came to hear him. They enjoyed his, his fresh and, and wonderful approach and his ability to speak for God. For their part, the religious leaders were cautiously concerned about this new, young, untrained teacher, this rabbi that was challenging their traditions with the very words of the Old Testament. Now, there were informal teaching times, too, where a large crowd would gather to hear Jesus preach. You know, sometimes those crowds numbered the tens of thousands. His powerful messages oftentimes challenged and and convicted and inspired them, while at other times he confused them and even made them angry. But in between these gatherings, Jesus carried on an up-close and personal ministry with the common, ordinary people of the day, people like, like you and people like me. Much of that up-close and personal ministry was done with with 12 men. These men were chosen by Jesus himself to be his disciples. These men left behind their jobs, they left behind their families, and they traveled along with Jesus. He trained them to know God as they served alongside him in the ministry. He even sent them out on their own, giving them the authority to cast out demons and to heal every disease and affliction. Jesus invested much of his time and energy into these men, for they would be the ones who would carry on his ministry after he left. But Jesus' personal approach was not limited to these men. His secondary ministry of healing also brought him into contact with hundreds, maybe even thousands of needy people. Once Jesus' reputation for healing became known, oh my goodness, many of the diseased and infirm came to him. In fact, they followed him wherever he went. They came from every walk of life, from every part of the country. And Jesus was incredibly compassionate and, and patient, healing all of them who came. There was also a small group of people that that Jesus came to, folks that he sought out. Early in his ministry, in the city of Capernaum, Jesus came to the house of his disciple Peter. There he healed Peter's stricken mother-in-law, who was dealing with a very difficult fever, and he did so simply by touching her hand. Later, Jesus was asked to come to the house of a ruler whose daughter had died. This man came to him believing that just a touch from Jesus would bring her back to life. As Jesus arrived, the memorial service was already underway. After clearing the room of the mourners, he took the girl's hand and she instantly came back to life as if she had only been sleeping. On another day in the city of Nain, Jesus came to the funeral of a boy. A boy who was his mother's only son. He was moved with compassion toward this widow. And he told her, do not weep. He then touched the platform the boy was laid on. And he said simply, arise. And the boy that was dead sat up and began to speak. Later in the city of Jericho, Jesus came upon two blind men sitting by the roadside begging. Well, they called out to Jesus, but the crowd told him to be quiet. Jesus, being Jesus, moved counter to the crowd, and he took pity on the men by reaching down and touching their eyes. Immediately, they regained their sight, and they began to follow him too. 
Crossing to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus and his disciples came to a man who was possessed by many demons, ostracized by his family and his community. He spent all of his time wandering among the tombs. Upon seeing Jesus, the man knew immediately who he was, and he asked him, What do you want to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Jesus commanded the demons to come out of him, and they did so, entering a a herd of pigs that immediately ran down a steep hillside and into the lake, and they were drowned. Jesus then sent this man back to his home, free from his torment, and told him this, declare how much God has done for you. So far, my friends, We've seen that Jesus came to teach people the truth, calling them to repentance. He also came to show people God's grace by healing their bodies and even raising some of them from the dead. But his ministry didn't stop there. Jesus came to redeem people's lives too. In the city of Capernaum, Jesus came across a tax collector by the name of Matthew. Instead of crossing to the other side of the street like like some of us maybe would do, Jesus asked him to follow him, and Matthew did. That evening, Matthew invited all of his friends and associates to gather to his house for a party, to have a dinner, and to have Jesus there and to meet him. Jesus told some of the folks who were sitting on the outside, who were critical of the company he was keeping, who needs a doctor? The healthy or the sick. I'm here inviting the sin sick, not the spiritually fit. This redemption also extended beyond the borders of Israel. Jesus was traveling through Samaria and came to a well where he met a woman. He asked her for a simple drink of water and that led to a discussion, a discussion about life, worship, marriage, and redemption. Through her testimony of encountering Jesus that day and placing her faith in him, many of her countrymen also came to faith. After spending time with another wealthy tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus, Jesus' message of truth and grace so impacted him that he promised to give half of his possessions to the poor and to restore anyone who he had previously defrauded for taxes that they supposedly owed. Jesus said to him that day, Today salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The love of Jesus for all kinds of sinners was a a new and revolutionary element in the sphere of religion. His initiative in seeking them his giving them full acceptance, and his desire to have close fellowship said volumes about this this God-man and his message of salvation. Sadly, there were some who wanted nothing to do with Jesus or the message of redemption that he was bringing. They felt threatened by the truth, and they resisted the grace that he offered them. These people plotted to have Jesus arrested and to bring folks to falsely accuse him of crimes that he did not commit. They even persuaded one of the disciples to betray him. Through their efforts, Jesus also came before the Sanhedrin, the religious court to be tried. Through their efforts, Jesus also came to the praetorium to be beaten and whipped by the soldiers. Through their efforts... Jesus also came before the Roman governor, Pilate, to be tried again and convicted. They manipulated the governing authorities into holding a trial where their threats to the governor, coupled with the constant pressure from the crowd, resulted in Jesus being sentenced to die. The next place that that Jesus came was to a hill outside of Jerusalem called Golgotha. There on the hillside, he was crucified. After his death, some of his followers took his broken body and they, and they buried him in a, in a borrowed tomb. 
Everyone, including those who had believed and followed him, thought it was over. Many feared for their lives and they hid from the authorities. Oh, but they were wrong. Three days later, Jesus came out of the tomb, victorious over death, having paid the penalty not for his sins, but for ours. Jesus came to prove. Jesus came first to the women who served him in the ministry. He appeared to them on their way to tell the disciples that that the tomb was empty, that Jesus had risen. Jesus came next to the two men walking on the road to Emmaus. At first, they didn't recognize him. They conversed with him about the recent events in Jerusalem and about a prophet named Jesus. And using the scriptures, Jesus explained to them God's plan of redemption. Coming to a village, they they stopped to eat and, and maybe spend the night. And at the dinner table, Jesus broke the bread and he gave it to them. And at that very moment, they recognized him and he vanished. Jesus then came to the disciples who were hiding from the Romans and the temple, temple police, thinking that they could be, very next, be the very next ones to die. Jesus came. And he stood right among them, even though the door was locked, and told them, peace be with you. After showing them his nail-scarred hands and feet to prove who he was, they were overjoyed to see him. Jesus came to the disciples once again, this time out where they were fishing in the sea. While on the beach, he came to Peter. who had had denied him three times prior to the crucifixion. Knowing the anguish that Peter felt for his failure, Jesus restored him. He restored him by exhorting him to get back to work, loving people into the kingdom. In Galilee, Jesus came to the disciples once again. Seems like they needed more help, didn't they? And he commissioned them this time. And he told them, go and make disciples of all the nations. The message of redemption was to be given to all people for all time. Brothers and sisters, seeing why and to whom Jesus came tells us much about the heart of Jesus for the helpless and the hurting. He ministered to the physical needs of the families of his disciples. Secondly, he gave life to the children of both the rich and powerful and the poor and fatherless. Third, he brought healing and helps to the disabled and the destitute. Fourth, he brought freedom to the captives of the evil one, Satan. Seeing why and to whom Jesus came tells us much about Jesus' heart for the spiritually lost and broken as well. He reached out. To two men at separate times, both whose occupations made them outcasts from their country and their own people. Both of these tax collectors had a complete change of heart after their encounter with Jesus. Instead of making money their God, they chose to follow Jesus. Instead of using their resources for their own gain, they would use them to benefit others. Jesus also reached out to a woman of questionable character from a race of people that were looked down upon. He shared with her the good news of salvation that is available to all people through believing in him. And she accepted and led others in her village to follow in Jesus. Seeing why and to whom Jesus came tells us much about Jesus' heart for all the men and women who call him Lord. He came to them in their grief when all seemed hopeless. He came to them in their fear when their faith had run out. He came to them in their failure when personal disappointments derailed their hope. And he came to them when they needed direction and he commissioned them to carry on the ministry that he had begun. Hopefully, dear ones, by now you have been reacquainted with why Jesus came and to whom he came. 
I hope you also understand, there is not a one of us here who can say that Jesus didn't come for the likes of us. We have no excuse. The record is clear. It's clear he came for all, to save all. It's also clear that for those of us who believe in him, he will be there for us whenever and whenever, wherever and wherever. Let's try that again. Whenever and wherever we need him. My friends, I want you to uh, help me here a little bit. I want you to think about how you would finish one of the following statements. How you would finish one of the following statements. The first is, Jesus came into my life when... Secondly, Jesus came and delivered me from... Third, Jesus came and gave me a, you fill in the blank. I want you to speak, to share something that relates to one of those questions. I would love for you to share it with all of us here. In fact, I'll give you an example. And then to keep it orderly, if you have something to share, just wave and stand up and and say it out loud. All right? Let me start. Are you ready for this? Don't let me down now. I know you're thinking, well, if I don't say something, church will get out sooner. (laughs) Ah, No, don't go there. Don't go there. No, no, no. This is a moment for us to share something with one another that Jesus is coming to us did for us. All right? Here goes. Jesus came into my life when my mom led me to accept Jesus as my Savior as a young boy. Okay? That's it. Right there. Who's next? And by the way, keep it brief and to the point. Who will start? Mac? Jesus came into my life when my mom led me to accept Jesus as my Savior as a young boy. And you were saved. Yes. Somebody else? Yes. Sandra? Jesus came. Yeah, yeah. Someone else. I saw, I saw a hand over here or someone was waving at flies. I don't know which. Someone else. Yes. Okay, so Jesus came into your life when Jenny Jellison introduced him to you. Okay, all right, someone else over here. Yes. Great, great. Thank you. Someone else. Dee? Okay. Yes, that girl back there. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Yes. Mm, amen. Delivered her from abandonment and rejection. Yes, someone else? Rosie, were you raising your hand or am I picking on you? great great praise god for sunday school teachers who else who else jesus came and delivered me from something or jesus came and gave me something yes mary amen amen praise god praise god who else who else? We already did you. We'll come back to you. Someone else. Someone else. We have time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ted. Anybody else? Yep. Oh, we got a little guy right here. Yes. Amen. Jesus came into his life when he came to church. Praise God. What else? Yes. Aaron. Amen. So a hard time in her life, and God brought her through. Thank you, Karen. Anybody else? We need to celebrate these moments in our lives. Sometimes we just put them in the, in the back pocket or, or back on the shelf, and we think, wow, God saved me from that, and now I'm back to business as usual. <laughs> oh, my friends, here at Easter is the time to remember back what God has done 
which helps us to be all the more faithful in looking forward, knowing that God is going to continue to do his work in us. Hi, you guys. I want us to praise Jesus this morning because he set us free. And he did a work for us on Calvary that makes us who we are today. Christians who are headed up there someday. We have hope. Folks, we sang these words a little while ago. They are true of everyone who has believed in Jesus and accepted him into their life. We have hope. And you can put those words up if you would. Thank you. We have hope that his promises are true. In his strength, there is nothing we can't do. Think about that. Yes, we know there are greater things in store. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm a raging sea. Think about it. Lives in us. He lives in us. In this world of, of spiritual confusion, the followers of Christ are endowed with the very power of God that enables us to bring light into this dark, dark, dark world. We are the hope of turning this world around, my friends. Our faith is not in some dead prophet, but in the resurrected Christ who gave us a victory over sin and showed us the way to heaven. Praise God. So we need to break out of our sorrows and woes and celebrate the Jesus who came into this world to save sinners like me and like all of you. We have much to celebrate, my dear friends. David? And we'll uh, just sing this few verses and choruses again. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those around can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can children sing it out we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome the same power that rose Jesus from the grave the same power that commands the dead to wait lives in us lives in Greater things in store, we will not be 
Sorry, Chris. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same power that will one day resurrect you and I to the glory of heaven. Well, I don't know about you, but as for me and, and this group of guys, we're getting ready for that day. Nice transition, right? <laughs> We're guys. We're not very complicated. <laughs> All right, Chris, let's do it. I think Tony has a few things to say. Tony has nothing to say, which is an unusual moment. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I'm getting out of the way because the praise team wants to sing you out with an old song that we used to sing about 20 years ago. It's called Celebrate Jesus. Will you stand with us and celebrate this beautiful, wonderful, enthusiastic song about our Jesus risen from the dead.
coming. Great to see you. Have a great rest of your Easter Sunday.